All season long, we've been celebrating the 10th anniversary of the sports sport with 44's Top 44. But of course, TV 44 broadcasting sporting events long before the sports sport debuted in August of 2005. And Mike Sheff was a vital part of the TV 44 broadcast team from play by play to hosting sports forum. Well, Shep has written a book about his experiences, Game Night, My Career in Sportscasting, and recently sat down with Mark Miller to discuss the book. Game Night, My Career in Broadcasting. You wrote a book after years of us joking about it because you knew everything about <laughs> broadcasting in this area. You did it. Why write a book, Mike? Well, I got to thinking after my career was over that it would be interesting to go back and take a look at things. It's kind of a retrospective starting in 1979. And uh, my career went to 2013, and a lot happened during that time span. And it was the kind of a start of a, a new era here in Northwest, West Central Ohio, of uh, doing games, starting with Centel Cable, and then here with TV44 and WOSN. And uh, it was, ended up being a, a tremendous journey, just a, kind of a sentimental journey, going back to the great games, great players, and all the things that were involved in my sportscasting career. 35 years, 2,500 some events. Now I know you have a great memory, but how in the world did you accumulate all of the facts that you have in this book? <laughs> well, with the basketball part, it was pretty easy because I had saved all my scorebooks mm -hmm. that I had kept all through the years. I had saved all my state tournament programs, which are just a treasure trove of statistics mm -hmm. and other data about the teams that played at the state and all the great players that played there. So from that aspect, it was very uh, easy to accumulate that information. For the football part, it was a little bit harder. I didn't have as much of a statistical bank to work from. So I'd have to consult the old newspapers, uh, go to the, mic to the microfilm at the library and that type mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, but I still had uh, quite a few programs from uh, the state football as well. So uh, all those things coming together and just having a pretty good memory of some mm -hmm. of the more prominent things that happened in my career, I was able to piece together the information and put my book together. Well, you allowed me to read the draft. It was very interesting. And and you talked about liking sports from the time you were a little guy, but also liking the broadcasting part of it. Did you pattern, when you finally got the call games, did you pattern your style after anybody? Well, Mark, when uh, I was growing up, the, uh, the guys that I really admired and emulated were the guys who sort of stuck to the basics. Somebody like a Lindsey Nelson or Ray Scott with Green Bay or Ken Coleman, the Browns, uh, Cleveland Browns play-by-play -play man, Jimmy Dudley. It was fellows like that, that, that I liked their style, where they didn't embellish too much, mm -hmm. uh, that they, they did a, a good job of describing the basics and then giving the viewer information that uh, was really necessary and they needed to know and that would help make the broadcast more interesting. I suppose it was those fellows who really influenced me the most. Well, you know, we think about famous broadcasters and you think of Al Michaels and Do You Believe in Miracles and, you know, several of the others. And, and for me, your famous saying was, look out Columbus, here comes Lima. That was the year, 92, I believe, yes. when LCC and Lima Senior were both going down to the state tournament. And if I recall, you and I did those regional finals in the same day. We did some traveling in between, and it was that second game when they won that you said that, and it ended up in the papers and on the 44 highlight tape, and, and really a cool saying that hopefully we can say again this year, huh? That would be something, yeah. wouldn't it? Yes, that was 1992. And uh, I, I believe we did the LCC game first, and they had won a very close game yeah. uh, to win their uh, regional championship game. And then we went down to Columbus in the Fairgrounds Coliseum, mm -hmm. which is a very unique setting. Not a great setting for mm -hmm. high school games, but somewhat of a unique setting. And I still remember that game so well. Lima Sr. was uh, playing Newark, and of course Lima Sr., that was the culmination of the Greg Simpson era. And they came from behind to win that game in the second half. And they ended up winning that game by five or six points, uh, I think it was 78 to 74, something like that. And that's when I, I made that statement, because that was the first time that ever happened, that yeah. both the T-Birds and the Spartans would be going to the state tournament. Well, in your book, you talk a lot about how uh, 44, especially in local TV, started getting into doing games and tape delaying mm -hmm. them. Uh, but you also were a part of several different shows and events here at 44. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, when we started here at TV 44, First of all, we just concentrated on the games. We wanted to build a bigger viewership than just the Christian programming that the station offered. And then we started replaying the games and doubt built an audience. But uh, between the Joe Wasik and some of the other fellows working here at the station, John Owens and people like that, we thought we'd expand a little bit. So we got into things like uh, Touchdown Friday, which was a scoreboard show at the, after the Friday night games that aired at 1030. And we, it was a scores and highlights and special features show where we would have crews go out and shoot highlights of the games all around the area. So we'd have maybe 12 to 15 games that we could show highlights of, and uh, obviously have the final scores, have the scores of all the games, and then we'd bring you in, we'd bring Jerry Snodgrass in to 
maybe talk about games that, that you had been to, or, and we would take phone calls as well and have the people talk about the games they had seen. And that way, the viewers got to see players like uh, Ben Roethlisberger, or Ben Mock, or Matty Mock, or uh, Todd Beckman, you know, uh, Bobby Hoying, fellas like that during, uh, from Touchdown Friday. So that was, made things very, very interesting. And then we also did Sports Forum. That was one of my favorite shows. It was an in-depth talk show one night a week. We did it on Monday. Game night will be available in March. For more information, head to his website, shepbook.com. That's Shep, C-H-E-P-P, book.com. For more information for the conversation between Mark and Mike next month on WOSN. Again, that's shepbook, S-C-H-E-P-P, book.com.